Good morning. Craig Howard here. Happy to be with you again this morning. Do you know where the concept of storage buildings came from? Well, it came from a man by the name of Jim Noop. And Jim noticed he was, he was building apartment buildings in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. And he noticed that the people were complaining because they didn't have a place to put all their stuff. And so they were trying to figure out what to do. And, and he bought it. He, he began to think about it. Uh, they wanted, you know, they didn't have a garage. They didn't have a shed. And, and so he bought a piece of ground near the apartment complex and he put up these 10 by 10 storage buildings. And people thought he was crazy. They said, nobody's going to, you know, has that much stuff that they need to rent a shed to put their stuff in. But in no time at all, they were all rented out. They were all sold out. And so he bought another one and another one and another one, another piece of ground. He put up more and more in different cities all around the up and down the, the California coast. And pretty soon he had hundreds, maybe thousands of these things put up and they were all rented to capacity. Um, people like their stuff. And it's fun, it's crazy because a lot of times what people put in these storage buildings within a fairly short period of time, they have more money invested in the rent of the storage building than what the stuff that's in it's worth. But people still do it. Paul <clears throat> had a had an issue with that or not an issue with that not an issue with storage buildings because they didn't have storage buildings in his time but he had an issue with um, you know learning how to to be content in your circumstances and over in the book of Philippians chapter 4 I'm sure you're familiar with this uh, first of all in verse 10 he, he I, I want to point this out. In verse 10 he says, But I rejoice greatly in the Lord that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Paul was an encourager. Paul was somebody who, uh, the word edification isn't the word I want, but Paul is someone who just really worked at building people up, not for so much for what they had done, but for the kind of people they were. It's one thing to encourage somebody or tell somebody, you know, praise somebody for what they've done. It's another thing to praise somebody because they're just a good person and to let them know that. And Paul is saying, I want to praise you because you met me in my point of need because you were such good people and because, you know, you would have done it sooner, but you didn't have the opportunity. You don't, didn't know where I was, but you are the kind of people that make a difference in people's lives. But then in verse 11, he says, not that I speak in regard to need, for I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to abase, how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere, everywhere and in all things, I have learned how to be full and how to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And then he said, not because of myself. I've learned that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This morning, my question to you is, number one, are you a... Oh, I wish I could think of the right word. It's not an encourager. It's not an edifier. Are you somebody that sees the good in other people and sees the, the blessing they are and lets them know just because of the kind of person they are? Are you somebody who builds the people around you up or are you somebody that tears the people around you down? And then secondly, are you a person that just is consumed with stuff or have you learned the secret of contentment? Most people in our society in the United States are consumed with stuff. We measure one another by who has the nicest clothes, by who has the biggest house, the nicest car, by who has the most stuff, you know, the, 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 nicest, the nicest quad or the nicest, uh, you know, just, just stuff. Best furniture and on and on and on the list goes. But Paul says, I've learned to be content whether I have a lot or whether I have a little. And Paul lived in both circumstances. He said, I've learned to be content. And, you know, our, my challenge to you today is to say to you, learn to be content in the circumstances you find yourself. Learn to be content regardless of whether or not God has given you an abundance or whether God has given you 
what is sufficient for your need because we all, to be honest with you, we all have more than we really need. Well, contentment. Cont- be, be, being a contented encourager. Being a contented affirmer. That's the word I wanted. Affirming the people that are around you. Are you are you able to affirm the people that are around you and be content in your circumstances? Paul had learned the secret to that, and that's why Paul was able to write with such a joyful note about him. He's writing this from prison, from being under house arrest, chained to a Roman guard. Paul learned to affirm the people around him and be a blessing to them and said, I've learned to be content whatever my circumstances, but not because of myself. I've learned to do it through the strength and power of Jesus Christ. That's my challenge to you today. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.